So, indeed, I'm Martin Laha. <coughs> uh, I'm not an academic, I'm a game designer, I'm also a reader, and uh, um, I'm interested in gaming, games in general. And um, um, I came here to talk uh, about processes in uh, Europa Universalis Pro, <coughs> and uh, to be more specific about uh, Whitehead, Whiteheadian approach to um, to video games, and uh, it began when I was playing Europa Universalis Four, and I started to think uh, why this game has so so much idle time, and what is what, why designers uh, des designed designed it this way, and uh, I started to think about this game, and I started to <coughs> to think that this game uh, pretty much models uh, Whiteheadian reality. So um, I want to talk about this game in terms of uh, philosophy of process. And uh, at first I will, um, I will recall some basic facts about, uh, about this Whiteheadian approach. And uh, later on I will define game uh, in terms of uh, philosophy of process. And uh, at the end, I will talk about uh, action and idleness in Europe by Universal Sport. Uh, this is the game. Uh, this is a screenshot taken during my playthrough. I will talk about playthrough because I, I want to distinguish game and playthrough. Game uh, in this system is something different than playthrough. So, um, as you see, I, I was playing with Byzantium and I was uh, taking my revenge on Ven uh, Venetia, uh, and uh, that's how the game looks. Uh, mm, it's a real-time strategy game. A uh, player picks a country in the world and directs it from uh, through history, and uh, design of this game encourages the player to have fun with emergent storytelling and alternative histories of the world. And um, beating the game is not as important. I mean, there is a score, uh, and you can achieve some points, uh, achieve a score, but it's, it's not important. It's a sandbox game. The player is just encouraged to, to, have, to, um, to play with possi possibilities. And um, any country in the world is playable. Uh, the player may pick uh, another country after loading Mm, a saved game. So, for example, if I want to today, if I today, uh, if, if today I want to play uh, the Ottoman Empire, I change the country I'm playing. And um, uh, as I said, uh, achieving the highest score is not uh, encouraged. In fact, uh, the game puts emphasis on short time, sh short term goals. Uh, that player may achieve, and those those, go those goals might be achieved in many ways. For example, when I want um, to annex a province, I can do it in a diplomatic way or um, by conduct conducting a war. So, uh, as I said before, I want to talk about this game in terms of uh, Whiteheadian Whiteheadian philosophy of process. So, <laughs> if Whitehead was on Steam. Uh, it would be described as uh, Hegel mixed with romantic poets, with Alexandrian church fathers, with uh, strongly, strongly influenced by pragmatism, and uh, it would have uh, mixed reviews because of terrible writing and uh, excellent concepts. Uh, and uh, just to recall very briefly, so uh, in Whitehead there is no substance, there are what you experience are events event, and um, nature is uh, is our experience so it, it's kind of phenomenology so um, um, video in this approach video games are also part of nature uh, it doesn't matter that they are artifacts that they, they were create, created by uh, humans because in white hat everything is a creature even God so um, he has creativity as uh, ultimate principle. So um, there is 
for example, when, when I am playing a game, there is no difference mm, uh, for playing a game and watching a sunset is the same thing. Uh, and mm, uh, what what is real in Whitehead are uh, actual occasions. So they are drops of experience that you know sum up. They have. Uh, um, they are uh, independent, and uh, they reality is, consi is consisting of is consisted of them. Uh, they are monads or windows. Uh, that means that there is a, um, they prevent uh, um, data from concrete actual occasions and. Uh, they exist in becoming and they become concrete, actualized, and they become uh, data for another actual occasions in becoming. Uh, um, and uh, I use this word prehending, and um, uh, actual occasions are prehending data from other actual occasions uh, already that are already concrete and from eternal objects. And uh, those are physical prehensions and conceptual prehensions. So, um, actual occasions, occasion looks like this. It's, it is uh, bipolar, it has a physical pole and mental pole. So, um, um, it, it uh, receives data from, data from uh, concrete actual occasions and um, um, it allows ingression of eternal objects, and when it perishes, it becomes it becomes a um, datum for another actual, actual occasion. And um, in my head, like, like in, in uh, Buddhist cosmology, everything is connected with everything. So. Um, um, White had called this process <coughs> compressions, so or growing together. And <coughs> uh, what it, when it comes to video games, uh, mm, one of uh, categories of uh, existence in uh, Whitehead is proposition. And sorry for for wall of text, but <laughs> I found it very amusing that uh, uh, when Whitehead is trying to Mm, describe a proposition. He 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 is using an example. Uh, uh, he's describing uh, alternative history. So Whitehead says, "Consider Battle of Waterloo. We knew that uh, Napoleon was defeated, but what if not?" And this "what if not" uh, for Whitehead is a proposition. It's a. Mm, mm, uh, it's a, a nexus of actual occasions. Uh, mm, mm, uh, okay, so a proposition is a, <coughs> is a synthesis of physical feeling and conceptual feeling, and when they are integrated, they give a propositional feeling. And uh, in, in a proposition, there is nexus of actual occasions, in this case, uh, in uh, this example, it's a battle of Waterloo, and a set of possibilities that refer to this nexus. So, what if Napoleon uh, was not defeated, for example? And mm, mm, uh, the same situation, we can define a video game as a proposition also. In in uh, Whitehadian Whitehadian system, video game is also a proposition. So we have um, nexus of act actual uh, two two sets of uh, nexuses of act actual occasions. The first one is set of rules and uh, um, predicative pattern. So a predicative pattern is this um, set of uh, eternal objects that, that possibilities that refer to. Uh, to this uh, to this nexus, so for uh, for nexus of actual occasions call, called rules of the game, we have um, a predicative pattern set of possibilities, and for second nexus, uh, 
actual history of the world, we have predicate pattern of eternal objects uh, called uh, possible histories. And um, uh, I think every video game may be, um, may be, defi may be defined as a proposition and um, um, because it includes some potentiality that refers to some actuality. For example, um, it's really hard to, um, to express it because uh, when I express it, it means that I've already prehended this proposition and I have some propositional feeling that, um, for example, I can beat the game. Uh, it's already a proposition or uh, you can um, you can make a history um, you can create a history with uh, uh, with with uh, Byzantium Byzantine Empire that survived uh, you know um, siege of Constantinople so um, uh, so game is a proposition it means it's a impure potentiality uh, it's impure because it always refers to some actuality and propositions in whitehead are are, are uh, lure for feelings they uh, mm, they lure propositional feelings and uh, propositional feelings are born of contrast of physical feelings and conceptual feelings and uh, mm, it happens in a concreting experience so uh, mm, oh, I, I will not talk about uh, concretions. I will show this graph. So mm, uh, it's stolen from uh, Sharmu's uh, Whiteheadian aesthetics. The same one you may find you may find in uh, a key to, a key to process, process and reality. But mm, this graph shows this process of uh, becoming and perishing and um, passing uh, data to um, actual occasions in becoming and uh, um, as you can see there are those propositions and propositional feelings that uh, are synthes synthesized out of um, physical feelings and con conceptual feelings. Mm, later on, they are supplemented by uh, more complex feelings uh, and by uh, intellectual feelings. But mm, on very basic level, the proposition is not a cognitive thing. I mean, uh, mm, when uh, the game lures uh, for our for players' feeling, it it isn't on cognitive level. It's on mm, it's on emotional level, or it you know. It's on, um, it arouses curiosity or it arouses, you know, some, um, some very basic emotions. And later on, as we play the game, we, we add some additional feelings, some supplementary feelings. Uh, so, um, um, so I think uh, in white Whiteheadian white system, we can define uh, a game as a proposition, and um, we can use um, something that was done already by uh, Sherbourne to um, to to describe what is playing a game. So uh, he was describing what is an art object and uh, how aesthetics looks in Whitehead. And uh, he was arguing that um, that uh, um, a work of art is a proposition, and uh, that work of art uh, is attracting feelings, and uh, um, it is that work of art is uh, created to uh, by an artist to um, to be recreated. <coughs> Uh, by uh, by audience in an in an contrasting process, and um, I think that uh, games, Europe, uh, Universal Sport, for example, are also um, designed to entertain players, and um, they are also propositions, 
And I think that uh, we can use this concept to say that uh, games are propositions uh, that are meant to be recreated in a performance or playthrough uh, by the player mm, and uh, playing a game is recreating this initial proposition. So uh, playing a game is a loop and uh, it's a loop of uh, objectification. Uh, this uh, object objectification means that we are prehending this proposition we are mm, this proposition becomes an object for for uh, for the subject uh, I, I'm not talking mm, I'm not talking specifically that the, the player is a subject because uh, it's it may be one of the subjects I will talk about it later but so but the proposition is objectified mm, and uh, there is this compression process when uh, feelings emerge and uh, out of these feelings when uh, actual occasion reaches its satisfaction new proposition emerges and this proposition is again objectified and it's a cycle so it repeats so mm, mm, so again games are propositions uh, those pr propositions are prehended uh, Performance or performance per performing the game or, or playthrough is a cycle of object uh, obje ob objectifying the proposition, emerging new proposition, and object or renewing re renewing this proposition and objectifying this proposition again. Uh, so the player, um, I will talk briefly about the player because uh, games are designed for the players and. Uh, um, uh, we can pick the player as one of subjects of, of this proposition. Uh, so the player is prehending the proposition for his subjective time. Uh, the proposition becomes objectified and uh, in co concreting process, new proposition emerges and cycle is repeated. But um, the player is not the only one who, who, is, uh, who makes decision, the decision in the playthrough and a ma majority of decisions uh, is taken by the algorithm. So um, this compression process is a process of uh, cooperation and the player is working together with algorithm. And um, um, as I said before, you can, player is, we, we can pick, um, I pick the player as the subject, but it's not, it's not the only possible subject because uh, Whiteheadian philosophy is um, uh, rarity, so um, you know this concretion process. It doesn't have any pl pl player. Sometimes the player is not the most important element of this process. And uh, when we are talking about the player or the performance, we are abstracting it, and uh, we are abstracting it from the, this process and we are mm, cutting off some connections uh, in these concretions. Mm, so, mm, so it's very, you know, we should be careful when, you, when we are talking what players do, what the, what the players do, what uh, the concretions do. Uh, mm, but anyway, uh, as I said before, the performance of the game is a loop of uh, appre uh, apprehending the proposition, objectifying it, and uh, um, renewing the proposition uh, that is objectified again. And algorithm and the player are working together to produce feelings in this process. And those feelings uh, um, are uh, mm. result of synthesis of actions. Uh, performed by, by the player and the algorithm. Mm. Mm. So, so when we are talking about it from the perspective of the player, the player is uh, apprehending the proposition and allows ingression of uh, eternal object. Uh, the player is 
Yes. Uh, sorry. Uh, so, uh, the player is important because uh, it uh, because he's able to do some things that other two is not able to do, uh, like uh, evaluating the performance, uh, connecting symbols that are uh, generated by the game with their meanings. It's a part of uh, Whitehead that um, symbol and meanings are two separate things, and action is needed to connect them and. Uh, for example, when the game displays codes of arms or uh, pixels or maps or uh, silhouettes, uh, it's player's job to connect it with meaning. So, um, um, algorithm in the game is generating novelty and uh, is providing symbols uh, for the player and uh, helps to renew the proposition and player's job is to uh, evaluate the performance to um, uh, to connect symbols with meaning and to bring some additional feelings to enrich the, the performance because uh, uh, the developers they encoded some ideas in this proposition and gave it to the player but, but the player brings some additional feelings from outside and those feelings uh, are provided by for example play players education uh, players uh, attitude players approach uh, players uh, mm, the situation he's playing in right for example when he's playing uh, and someone is um, and I, I don't know and uh, a song is uh, is played in in the radio and the song uh, arouses some uh, I don't know, patriotic feelings, uh, the performance is also influenced. So, um, algorithm and the player, um, the role of the algorithm is to renew the proposition, to emulate uh, a passage of nature, to emulate, to provide symbols, to re rearrange them, and uh, player goal, goal is to uh, connect them with meanings and to um, and to uh, mm, and to evaluate them, and uh, it goes in cycles. Mm -hmm. So uh, those ci those um, I didn't oh, sorry. Uh, so it goes in cycles, and this idle time is needed. Uh, Um, so uh, this idle time is needed uh, for the algorithm to um, prevent results of players' actions, and player, players' actions are always meaningful because uh, he he evaluated them. So. Uh, Mm, algorithm needs this idle, ti idle time to prevent res results of players' actions and to create novelty for the player to prevent. And the player needs uh, idle time to apprehend renewed proposition and to connect symbols uh, rearranged by the performance with some meanings. And it's player job, it's player's job to mm, to make those connections. And every player does it in, in his own way. It's a private business. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> in the end, this idle time is needed to um, role play the game or to um, to build up meaningful game world. Sorry for the mess. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Uh, change over time exists but in a, in a different way and then 
is a very non-intuitive uh, way to represent uh, the world. Uh, and uh, you know what do you think mm -hmm. about it? Um, I think. Um, I think um, the f uh, immersion is this um, is a very good explanation how it, how it works because uh, when I would um, when I, I when it comes to describing immersion in in uh, white cat's metaphysics metaphysics I would say that um, uh, immersion is intensity of those of those feelings and uh, intensity of this of, of game world and game world of is built up of those feelings, and uh, uh, when the experience is really intense, when I am really immersed in the game, uh, the time, flow of time uh, is completely different when, for example, when I'm playing it distanced to the game. So um, when, when it comes to a presentation, I think that uh, there are some stages of uh, of immersion and at, at very at very at distant at the distant level the play, player is just a player he, he's just playing the game he, and he's playing and mostly he's playing attention to the rules and uh, on um, uh, average average level of immersion the player is uh, this country, in a European Universal Sport, for, for example, but in another game, he's this avatar he's playing, and because word of the game is made of the feelings, it, um, you know, it, it really depends on, on intensity of those feelings. And uh, on a very, very deep level of immersions, the player is really in the game. He's, you know, he's, the game is, for him, he's more real than the world around, and um, that's because in Whitehead, uh, world is what we um, what we experience. So, if experience of the game is stronger than experience of the surrounding world, it becomes the world. Pardon? Yeah. So, uh, you started by. Uh, saying that there is a difference between games and playthroughs, mm -hmm. which is obviously a very important difference, especially in, in mm -hmm. the case of Prophet philosophy. But I'm curious because many things that you presented were actually seemed to me to be uh, better fitting the playthrough, mm -hmm. and not the game. So the nexus of the actual instances is a particular playthrough, right? Mm -hmm. So no, 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 no. No, so that, that, that's, that's my the, question. The game so is a proposition, and it, it is something that exists, like right. actual occasions or eternal objects, and it is, you know, it's some somewhere, and it is, uh, saying, comment flaming, and, you know, it's, it's, it is okay. learning new feelings. And playthrough, it is a process. Uh, okay. it, it has some extension in time, it has some events, right. and... An external objects are the meanings that the player eternal connects, objects right eternal objects are in whitehead are uh, something like platonic forms yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so for so example so what i mean uh, when you said that the role of the player is that mm -hmm. it connects the game with the meanings right? uh, symbols with meanings uh, and yeah. uh, he also allows ingressions or, or ingression of those eternal objects right. so for example i say uh, today i am going to um, to uh, make uh, Byzantium great again. Right. Uh, so I invite these eternal objects like yeah, the empire, yeah. Byzantium, some, something that uh, pure potentialities, and I invite it through this proposition to the game, and uh, that's my, that's my, I'm conscious being, so that's my role in the game. And the algorithm of the game says, it receives some data, I, put in it and he doesn't give yeah, a yeah. fuck about yeah. uh, about you know those yeah, eternal yeah. objects yeah. he is processing 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 and he says what do you think about it what do you think about it and i says hmm i think it's great great hmm i think it's sad and that's how the game is played okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. right, um i think in the interest of not running too far over time we should wrap this up but um thank you once again thank you. Martin. Thank you.